Today's video is an honest review of the Carly car yeah. scanner. Now what you were meant to see at the start of the video instead of this bit was a plucky and excited Kip going through the Carly website, looking at the Carly car scanner and the options available and making a purchase. And I'm just whizzing through that now. I'm not going to show you that bit because it feels a pointless waste of time. Now the sort of take home of that bit is the, the premium Carly car scanner package actually comes with a lot more that actually costs a lot less than the standard package, which I found a bit strange. And I didn't really understand why until, well, you'll see at the end of the video. But yeah, I go through the ordering process and show the website and basically show you how to order it. And the reason I'm not showing you that now is because I don't think you should order that product. You can watch me use the product and see the issues that I had which are sort of part of my plea to you not to buy it. What they don't make clear is when you're buying the premium software package, when you stump up your cash, you're just paying for a year's subscription. Sure, it's tucked away in the small print, but it's not very, very clear. So you buy the Kali software and you get the scanner and the use of the software, but that's only for a year, which is fine. But what they don't tell you is how much it costs to renew for the next year. And also something they don't make immediately clear is it will renew automatically. And the only way you can stop that is by contacting their support, which I don't really like, but I've been head deep into Carly stuff for days now and I still can't find how much the renewal will cost. Could be the same price, could be hundreds of pounds, could be thousands of pounds, I don't know. But I do know a lot of their posts on social media get complaints that they're not entirely transparent about the pricing going forwards, which is naughty. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my use of the Carly car coder and you can see the experience I had but it's not that entire experience because there was literally hours of footage and this video has taken enough of my time already. So why don't you go and see Kip using the product and um, see how that works out and then I'll come back at the end and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about what I've discovered about the Carly car scanner. Well, it's a couple of days later and our little Carly has arrived. Uh, I'm not gonna do like a full unboxing because well, there it is. That is it. So this is our OBD2 connector here. And on this car, the socket for it to go in is under the dashboard on the driver's side. You'll have to check online where it will plug into on your car. So I'm going to plug it in. There we go. So it's snugly plugged in by the pedals. So I guess the first thing we need to do is go into the Carly app on my phone. Now I've already logged in with my account that I set up when I purchased the device, just to because I just have to blank out all the passwords and stuff anyway. So let's fire up the app and I will put it here. Okay, so let's select your vehicle, uh, add new car, and we're in an Audi, and it is an Audi TT. Is it a TT or an S? It's a TTS. And what year is it? It's 2019. And it is a Gasolina. So, Carly would like to use Bluetooth. That's okay. And then we want the Carly scanner. Connect. Oh, look, there we go. So it's connecting to the car. Exciting. So preparing compatible functions. Do you know what? It might be just a TT and not a TTS. Don't think it should make too much difference. So there we go. Right. Just one more moment is generating vehicle insights. I dread to think what the insights are. This car is driven a bit too quickly, but always legally, obviously. Ta -da! There we go. So let's um, let's analyze any car issues. I mean, hopefully there's no car issues. Let's uh, check for issues. That'd be so awkward, wouldn't it? But sometimes it, it logs sort of codes and things but they don't automatically throw an error on the dashboard. It's just for like when the dealership plugs it into their computers, it might say that a little sensor had a wobble or something similar like that. 
as I've mentioned earlier, it does all depend on what car you've got and what you can do exactly with it. I do think it's a little bit frustrating that you can't see on the website, put in your car year, put in your details and it can go, right, you can do all of this, all of this will work and these are the coding things that will work. You literally have to buy the device. And also I'm gonna see if I can find out how much it will cost to renew this next year. I mean, obviously the price will fluctuate, but who knows? Because this is gonna take a little while, what I'm gonna do is I'll just quickly speed things up, but I'll scroll underneath me all the cool people that have joined the channel. Remember joining the channel helps it grow and means I can purchase stuff like this without having to have the video sponsored by the company and potentially be a bit biased. This is an honest review of this item. So uh, yeah, let's uh, speed through and check out these awesome people. First up, we've got those kit fans who are Matt Lovey's JRC Electrical for the Burbs and Mark C. Then you have to get up really early to beat the kit early birds, and those are Roberta Gurdsum, Dean Ball, Sean at Cablesmith Electrical, Wayne's Retro World, Tim Salt, and Sorcerer Stan. Then I love these people so much, and they love me too, and that is our kit lovers who are Richard R. Blaster, Bella Webster, Lawrence, and Stair Sticks Flipping Fix. And she's still here, she is the number one kit nutter, and that is Becky Becky Boobar. Thank you, Becky, for your continued support. Anyway, on with the video. Oh, it's found one issue. Interesting. There we go, nearly done. Show results. Information electronics. <laughs> Maybe that is when I used the Navman software to update the software. So that changed the software versions. Okay, so let's go into coding and we can customize the car. Let's have a look at what things we can do. Please check, click on check coding possibilities to check which coding your ECUs are supporting. Don't worry, nothing will be coded yet. Okay, so let's check compatibility for coding. So I assume at this point it's talking to the car's internal computer and seeing what things can be changed, if any. Something I would like to change, which I think might be possible, is I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think you can make it so the mirror dips when you put it into reverse, which is quite handy to do because this car doesn't have a reversing camera and just having the mirrors tilt down so you can see the lines of the parking bay should um, might be helpful. Right, identification of compatible ECUs for coding is finished. Digital Garage can manage your coding backups this way. All your backups are synchronized over all your devices and you can restore after you've reinstalled the app. That's cool. It takes a backup of the existing settings before you do any coding. So if there's an issue, you can go back to how it was. So, okay. Right, so topics for door module, passenger mirrors, readout BTM. Okay. Release, lowering side mirror. What does this mean? Ah, there we go. Deactivates and activates the release for coding mirror lowering in reverse. Okay, so let's turn it to on. Maybe. On. Oh, synchronous mirror adjustment. Don't want that. Voltage below 12.5%. Okay. Well, let's um let's start the engine. Okay. Exciting, if a bit scary. Oh, voiceover Kip here. I try to do the coding again several times following a few of the troubleshooting steps, but it doesn't work. But then I have an idea. I wonder if it's because I put TTS and not TT. Let's add a new car. Could be very much user error on my part. That could be our reason. You know, this is this is an honest review. I'm going to show you things working or not working and admit when I've done something wrong. You kind of hope that it would know what car it's connecting to, maybe? I don't know. Surely all the information on the car is within the car. Don't know. But anyway, I'm going through the connection process again just to make sure. Right, let's go into coding. 
Let's try this again. Okay. Right, so we're backing up. There we go, lowering side mirror. On. Code now. Code anyway. Yep. Come on. I believe in you, Carly. You've got this, Carly. Come on. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? No. <laughs> Mirror knob must be set up. Oh. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I've put it onto the right hand side mirror now. Maybe that was it. Maybe it's user error. Might be checking out how good the returns policy is on this. Come on! Right, it said in the ZE section, didn't it? That we can look at doing this maybe. I wasn't even trying to code. I was literally just trying to... Oh, CE control unit. Central, yeah, it's Z, it says ZE here. Let's see if I can go into another module. Oh look, this, this one looks better. Okay. Oh, okay. So, we've got some stuff here we can change. I can turn the seat belt warning off. Come on, we've got to get at least something coding. Can we do a code? Is a code possible? No. I'm finding this whole process a lot more stressful than it should be. Maybe this review is going to be too honest. Can you be too honest? I mean, can I monitor live data? Just putting in some bits and pieces, some parameters. I mean, it's doing it's doing that part. There now follows a lot of footage sped up to 2000 times of me trying the coding over and over again. The camera is overheating and shouting at me. And yeah, then once we cut back, the camera just sort of dies, which is probably a good thing because I was losing my temper. Camera's overheating. It's not doing the coding. Um... Well, I've got my second camera and I'm in my car now, which is a Renault Capture. Now, something that I've discovered while I was inside the house and talking to Vicky about everything is her TT is a TTS. So maybe I didn't give it a fair crack of the whip because if you remember, I thought it was a TTS and then thought, oh no, it's a TT and switched back to a TT. But the coding failed on both. I don't think it's gonna work but I'm gonna go back and try just to double check to give it a fair crack of the whip. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna put it in my car, which isn't a super smart car like Vicky's, and uh, we'll see what it can do. And maybe we can try some of the other features we've not looked at yet. So let's put the ignition into the first position and add a new car, Renault, Capture, 15, diesel. Okay, and connect. There we go. It's showing fewer features because it can't do the coding, so that's okay. So I'm going to do the used car check, and apparently what this does is it looks in the ECU and verifies the mileage of the car. Now, I know this is about to go over 80,000 miles, but let's see what this says. So this is obviously designed to make sure that the mileage you're seeing on the screen matches up what the car's internal computers and systems are saying. It doesn't actually show me in miles, which is weird because I did tell it to go on Imperial in the settings. 
So that's a bit annoying, but 128,000 is probably about 80,000 miles, I think, I hope anyway. Two reports. Oh, okay, so it's made... Oh, there we go, look. So it's actually made a report, which is quite handy. Okay, well, I'm just gonna run the diagnostic scan in this car, see if it pulls up any errors. I don't think it will. Oh, hang on. No, it has five issues. What? Insanity. What's going on? Possible they could be voltage related, actually, because I did change the battery in the car. And when you unplug the battery, it can throw up errors. Maybe. That's interesting. It's found errors. Or is it? Show results. Engine issues, circuit oversupply, electrical circuit oversupply. See, unless you pay for the smart mechanic thing, it's not going to tell you exactly what they are. But I'm gonna clear those codes anyway. It's the UPC module. Generic communication issue in the ECU. Uh, right, yeah, that's a stop-start thing. Again, that's probably battery-related. I'm not going to stress too much on those. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little break, and then I'm going to go back into the Audi, make sure I've got 100% the right model, everything like that, and try the coding again. I don't think it's going to make any difference, but I don't know. So I'm going to give it a fair crack, this is an honest review, and I'm gonna try and show you as honestly as possible how it all works. So um, yeah, okay. Let's go back in the Audi and see if we can get it going. So um, I'm gonna start from scratch and put my screen back up here and we can see if it works or not. Hello, voiceover Kip here again. Now, because this video is cursed, there's a whole section of screen recording on my phone that didn't actually record. Now, I tried coding several times and it kept failing like it had done before. Now, I was getting so frustrated, I just thought, right, I'm going to do all the troubleshooting tips once again for the final time before I throw the thing out of the window. And this is what happens. Right, okay, let, let's do it. Let's do what it's telling me to do. Turn on your engine while using the app. I can do that. Do not operate any controls. Of course not, I won't operate any controls. Plug the scanner out, then in again, then connect again. Open the engine hood slash bonnet. Close all windows in the car, close all doors and make sure they're unlocked. Okay, I'm going to do that. So I'm gonna disconnect. I'm going to pull the Carly out. I'm going to put the Carly in. I'm going to connect again. And while I'm connecting, I'm going to open the boot. I'm going to open the bonnet just to see. Doors are shut, windows are shut. Okay, right, re reconnecting again. Right. Come on. <gasps> it worked. Okay. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Right, okay, it didn't work, but it did, remember it said I needed to adjust something in the other module. Oh, I'm feeling a bit more hopeful now. I'm now spending ages going through the exhaustive list in the ZE slash CE menu to find something about the mirrors going down. But I come to this realization. Yeah, he said I'd also need to change the setting in the ZE thing or CE, but it's not work. It's not there. 
One step forward, two steps back, eh? Right, okay. I don't, I, it, it's not as easy as they make out. Right, let's try, let's try turning the seatbelt warning off. And also try and changing the logo on the screen. Oh, dash went off and came back on again. Right, it's definitely done something because the seatbelt guy who is normally down here, he's gone. So that's definitely done something. I don't know about the variant of the startup logo. Let me get out of the car. Hmm, I don't know if that looks any different. Can't tell you. But definitely the seatbelt warning light is off. I think part of the problem is there's a lot of coding, but I don't think all of it is necessarily overly clear what it is. Like US side light front turn signal. Left front turn signal permanently activated. This coding only works with light switch in position two. What, what does that mean? Daytime running lights, side marker, front left. What does that mean? Synchronous mirror adjustment. Give that a code. I just don't know what it's doing. I definitely think with regards to the coding, it should have better descriptions of what things do. Maybe like a little animation or something because some of it is just a bit, I don't know, vague. Mirrors aren't dipping despite them being set to. There's no additional settings in the menu where it said that there'll be settings that I might use to activate it. It's a bit, I mean, something we did successfully definitely code is the seatbelt warning because that is gone. That's, that's not showing on here anymore. So it definitely does work, but I don't think it works as well as I expected or I think is as, as user friendly as I expected, I guess. But yeah, let's um, let me have a little muse, and I'll uh, finish up the video in a sec. <laughs> well, there you go. That was quite the ride, wasn't it? Now, I admit there was some user error on my part. I made some mistakes. I messed up. But fundamentally, the coding aspect of it didn't work as I thought it should. Some of the coding was successful, but it didn't actually work. And also, I think the software is so badly designed, it's not necessarily clear what you could be coding. Like, as I said in the bit before, there really needs to be some animations or some pictures to show you what all these things mean, because the descriptions are just terrible and quite often badly worded. The product just doesn't work. And what do you do with a product that doesn't work, you return it. I had a look at getting a refund on this absolutely dreadful product, and basically, you can't do it. They won't let you. If I bought the Carly license via the Carly web, can I get a refund? If you have ordered the Carly license via the Carly website, the return of the Carly app license is no longer possible. The cancellation right is lost upon the start of the contract performance. You agree to this policy by checking a box in the checkout. Because you buy the premium package, they've got some sort of disclaimer that you tick before you make your purchase that in very bad English, and I don't think it even fully makes sense, basically says that by using the software, you essentially give up your right to cancel. By placing the order, I declare my consent to the GTC, the data privacy policy, and the terms of cancellation. I expressly agree the performance of the contract prior to the end of the cancellation period. I'm aware that the right of cancellation will expire upon the start of the performance of the contract. 
I'm aware that licenses such as the features and smart mechanic will be billed annually. The contact and the provision of the full version of the application will begin on closing the transaction. So going into the software and finding out that it doesn't work as intended, you can't return the product and get a refund. That is mental. And I've never seen anything quite like that before. I completely understand that they want to <laughs> that they want to stop people just buying it, doing the coding if they manage to do it, and then returning it um, and getting a refund. But it's very, very, very dodgy. And I don't think it's legal, especially here in the UK. We do have rights as consumers, especially when you buy things off the internet. I think there's a 14 day calling off period. I'm in the United Kingdom. How can I send back the Carly scanner? Fill out this online form to process your return quickly and easily. Send your Carly scanner to the address below. Keep in mind, this is not a return label and you still have to cover return shipping cost. The Carly app license won't be refunded in case you purchase the premium package. For more information about our Carly app cancellation, please click here. And I don't think that they can do that, but they think they can. Now I think I'm gonna to have to do like a follow-up video to see how this goes and if I can actually get my money back. So please ensure you subscribe because if anything interesting happens, I will put out a video. But yeah, I just don't really understand it. The, the website basically says, you can fill in this returns form. We're not going to refund you because you've used the software. See, part of me doesn't want to send the actual device back because if they're not going to refund me anyway, but equally I don't want it. I just want my money back. Uh, I, it's mad. And it might be that we are protected in the UK and I can get my money back because it's been less than 14 days since I bought it. But what about the people in the rest of the world where they, they don't have those consumer rights? You know, this is a global product. They push this product all over the world you could find that you end up in a similar position to me where it doesn't do what you wanted it to do. You want to return it, but you can't, and they've taken your money. And to make it even worse is they will automatically renew your subscription in a year's time, unless you get in touch with them. Like I'm potentially down 90 quid on something that doesn't work and just, yeah, there's nothing I could do about it. I honestly am not sure what, how I'm going to work this out. So if, if you've got any thoughts or you know you know anything about the law, or if you wanna look at the Carly website and try and fathom it, then please do. But from what I've seen, they essentially say, you tick this box, you get no refunds. I don't think that's right. But I think what is most disappointing about this all is the people who I've seen use Carly, the influencers, the YouTubers who push it in their videos and they make it all look really great and really simple and really straightforward. What happens when their audience buys one and it doesn't do what they want it to do or expected it to do or what they've shown it to do, you don't get a refund. I think that is really shit. And yeah, I feel, I guess I feel a bit let down. You know, obviously all companies can be a pain in the butt and cause trouble and stuff like that. But it really does feel that Carly goes belt and braces in trying to stop you from getting money back if you find that you're not happy with their products and to try and get you even more money out of you the following year when you might have like tried it once, gone, oh yeah, it does that and just chucked it in a drawer. Because if you don't get in touch with them, they will take your money. It's really disappointing. So this video has been a frustrating, hard journey and it's not in any way the video that I wanted to bring you, but in some ways it is because I wanted to give an honest review without being in Carly's pocket and having them, you know, give me an affiliate code to pimp out to you and get more people to buy this product. In my opinion, you should not buy this product. It is dreadful. The Carly business practices are dreadful. The software is flaky and dodgy, badly made. Uh, I mean, the scanner thing seems all right. But I'd be very interested to hear your experiences with Carly, so please do put them in the comments below. They do seem to be quite hated, I guess, on social media. Anyway, I've spent far too long on this video and I don't want to take up any of, more of your time. So uh, I hope it's been interesting. I hope you've learned something, but yeah, anyway. 
Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, it's game over.